What's up everybody, Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and you are watching Ojeda Live. Countdown achieved. It's time for Ojeda Live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ojeda Live. We got R.D. Schroederdale on here first, followed by Shelly Gabish with her blue waves. We got Maureen with us. We got Adam Maston. Salute. We got Edna Russell with us. We got Kyle and Carla Smith, as always. We got Donna Markham with us. Donna, I get your messages, and thank you very much. Timothy Lamb is with us here. We got Jennifer Peck from Southern California. Patricia Sooms is with us. Monica Sue Phillips from Kentucky is here. We got Ben First Love from Pennsylvania. We got Michael Cottle on here. What's up, my brother? We got Constance Sims with the Blue Hearts. We got uh, Kelly Duncan from Illinois. Welcome to the show, Kelly. I don't think I've ever said your name before. Uh, Debbie Bell is on here from Colorado Springs. Uh, Dina Olson from Southern California is with us. Brian Goodwin from Indiana is in the house. Welcome to the show, Brian. We got Michael, well, once again, Michael Cottle from Washington, D.C. There we go. We got Scott Shirley on here from Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to the show, Scott Shirley. We got Diana Olson on here from Dallas. We got Sharon Harder from Wisconsin. We got Lisa Mitchell from Clinton, Illinois. Sandra Brown is here from California. Barbara Moos is here. We got uh, Carrie Lyons from Pennsylvania. We got Margie Aldrich from uh, Aldrich, North Carolina, and we have Michael Combs. Everybody make sure that you hit the thumbs up and you keep hitting them thumbs up and them hearts throughout the entire 30 minutes. And at the end of the 30 minutes, share the video. And if you can send it to somebody and, and let them know that they need to follow, please do so. Because that's how come I see these names that I've never said before. Because you guys are doing your, your job. You're spreading the word. And we're picking up momentum. So before I start anything, today I got an awesome gift. And for those of you who don't know, you know, I have a, I've got friends all over. And uh, recently, last year, I, I went back to Europe for 55 days. And I ended my trip in Scotland. And I was able to hang out with a guy by the name of Brian Young, who is a uh, Scotland Argyle. And I'm going to tell you that, you know, when you want to talk about people that are proud about what they do, look no further than uh, a Scottish Argyle or a, a Sutherland, a, a, a Southlander, I think. I, don't, I forget, but I, I don't know. But I, I will tell you this. I know he is an Argyle. He's an infantryman, and he served in Iraq. And, and let me tell you, he also served in Belfast. And for those of you that don't know, that don't maybe remember, years ago, many years ago, uh, there were things going on with the IRA in Belfast where we had uh, troops patrolling the streets, getting sniped, uh, bombs going off. I mean, it was a rough time, and, and Brian was there during that time. So he and I have a lot in common, and we just enjoy basically sending each other stuff. And he always, uh, like, like I sent him an 82nd Airborne Division t-shirt last. But today I got a package, and he sent me a patch from New South Wales, which is a police patch, which is pretty awesome. And I'm going to hang in my office because most of his stuff that he gives me is hanging in this office. He sent me this little metal iron Scotsman. And uh, this is badass. And, and this is something that when I see things like this, I'm like, this is really, really cool. So I'm really excited about this. He sent me an awesome Argyle uh, 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 Zippo lighter and it works. <laughs> so that's awesome. And he sent me this uh, shot glass from one of the uh, liquor companies right there in Scotland. So that's pretty awesome. So I'm, I've already kind of eyed where I want to set this stuff out. Uh, and thank you, Brian. Uh, now i got to figure out what I can send you next. So, uh, yeah, we'll figure that one out. So, And once again, i got some people that are going to be heading over after I get back from Europe, and they're going to go to Ireland, and, and I'm already basically talking to them into going up to Belfast and then taking a ferry over to Scotland and then meeting with Brian and Brian can show them uh, Falkirk with the Kelpies and uh, obviously uh, Edinburgh. And I just, it's amazing place folks. If you're going to Europe, 
man, if you can get over to Scotland, Scotland's probably, Scotland is badass. It is just badass. All right, folks, do you guys remember when Trump and all of his poorly educated followers went against Bud Light? Remember that? Kid Rock out there shooting up bottles of, of beer. Uh, all these people going crazy, saying that they were going to, you know, we're done. We're done with Bud Light. We're going to put them out of business. Kid Rock was shooting cans. But on February the 6th, 2024, February the 6th, it's just now March. So literally, you know, a month, a month and a week ago, Donald Trump all of a sudden posted about how it was time for everybody to get back to drinking the good old Bud Light. Wow. So, you know, they were all so agitated because Bud Light had decided to say, look, you know what? We're not basically going to let this person dictate Bud Light, but we're going to give that person an honorary can to show support for the LGBTQ community. And of course, all of these friggin' Bud Light drinkers uh, went ballistic and uh, basically started attacking Bud Light. And at the, to be honest with you folks, uh, I mean, Bud Light's a weak ass beer anyway. Uh, I, I don't drink ever, hardly ever. But if I do drink, uh, it's definitely going to be something that's usually something that's like overseas that runs circles around anything we make here in the States. That's a fact. But why did Trump do a 180 degree turn and start supporting Bud Light again. Well, on that exact same day, February the 6th, 2024, lobbyists from Anheuser-Busch announced a $10,000 a plate event for none other than Donald Trump. You see that, folks? Listen to this. Donald Trump, screw Bud Light. We don't give a shit about them. Let them that go and run out of business. We don't give a shit. Screw them. Oh, what do you mean they're throwing a $10,000 plate for me? Everybody, it's time to drink Budweiser again. Folks, that's what it is. They bribed Donald Trump. And Donald Trump absolutely will take the buy, the bribe and then tell everybody to drink Bud Light. Because Donald Trump doesn't give a shit about the people. He doesn't give a shit about Bud Light. But as soon as somebody offers to throw him a $10,000 a plate uh, uh, event, he's going to absolutely do what they want. Now listen to this, folks. That's from Bud Light offering him a $10,000 a plate deal. He is willing to go back on his word and tell everybody to start supporting Bud Light because they bribed him. So basically anybody in America that Donald Trump is going after, just say you're going to throw an event that's $10,000 a plate for Donald Trump and watch how fast he turns around and then all of a sudden likes you. Because that's it. Folks, what you're seeing here is you're seeing the threshold that anything that brings in Hundreds of thousands of dollars, Donald Trump is willing. So if Donald Trump will sell out his anger towards Bud Light for $10,000 a plate, how much do you think he'll sell a classified document for? What do you think? What do you think? $15,000 event? Huh? $15,000 a plate? <clears throat> For uh, you know, for, for every for every thirty thousand dollar raise, they get a classified document. Folks, you know where I'm going at with this. You see what I was talking about. Donald Trump is blatantly telling us that he doesn't give a shit if somebody throws money in his direction. He will completely erase everything and say, "Let's do what they want to do because they got uh, money, money." If he will turn his anger away because he got offered some money, then I guarantee you this son of a bitch sells documents. There are still classified documents that nobody has. Isn't it amazing that after Donald Trump took over as the presidency, all of a sudden, like shortly, like within a month after he took over, a massive amount of people that worked undercover were found out. Some of them murdered. 
But yeah, Donald Trump would protect those people for sure. Unless, unless maybe he got with Vladimir Putin and he wanted to impress Vladimir Putin. He said, hey, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a name and list of a few people that are kind of working for us against you. That would not surprise me one bit when it comes to Donald Trump. Donald Trump has already sided with Vladimir Putin. He's already sided with him. Donald Trump doesn't give a shit. Listen, folks, remember. And oh, by the way, you saw the video we all have. Well, you know, when, when, when Kim Jong-un speaks, his people stand up. I want that to happen for me. Donald Trump said that. That come from Donald Trump's mouth. So you better wake up. You better wake up. And I believe that people are waking up every single day. I believe every single day that Donald Trump sticks his foot in his mouth, that Donald Trump does or, 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 or gets, gets dropped more and more, and more people are starting to find the courage to step up and step out. And we have to hope that that happens. And I believe that it is. I believe that it is. Folks, let me tell you something. If you look at the polling, oh, yeah, Donald Trump won Florida by 81%. 81%. Damn. There was nobody running against him. And oh, by the way, if you don't realize that, what that means is like over 100,000 people that supported uh, uh, Ron DeSantis and supported Nikki Haley have said, no, thank you. We will not vote for Donald Trump. So Donald Trump is not going to get that. Now, now, Joe Biden won Florida by, you know, probably 98, 99%. But there's more down there in Florida. But let me tell you something. Florida's having a problem. A lot of people don't realize this. Florida is having a mass exodus because Florida has turned into the daggone red hat Trump balloons running around waving Nazi flags. And people down in Florida are now saying, we're done with this shit. And they're leaving. Believe it or not, people are moving to Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Right now, the issues with our states is we just got to figure out how we can basically help these people when it comes to jobs and stuff like that. But they're leaving Florida because Florida's a shit show. It always has been and it always will be until they elect people that will get things straight. I watched a video of a Trump supporter who said that she supports him for trying to help her with diabetic medicine. Folks, Donald Trump not only did not try to create something that was better than Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. He talked about, but he never did anything. But let me tell you something. Joe Biden, Joe Biden is the president that pushed and passed the bill. He signed the bill into law that said our elderly people that struggle, that need Insulin capped at $35. Now, what he's doing now is he's trying to make sure that everybody in this country is now going to get it for $35. All of us. All of us. So all of you diabetics out there, Donald Trump didn't do shit for you for four years. Joe Biden is now making insulin $35 a month, and you can't beat that. And he's also taking the, uh, uh, the, the breathing devices. The, shoot, I got one. Uh, uh, <coughs> you know, a pump that you, you, you breathe. And now what he's doing is he's making those $65 a pop. Understand that some companies are charging over $600 each for one of those little spray to catch your breath. Trump made a cognizant effort to allow pharmaceutical companies to raise prices on Americans. It's Donald Trump who had gone, uh, <clears throat> failed to cap anything. Joe Biden is the one who capped it at $35 for the elderly, and now he's pushing to cap it for all Americans. So anybody out there that has diabetes, that needs EpiPens, or needs uh, uh, the, the, the shake and... What the hell are them damn things called? I'm sure somebody's probably wrote that. Uh, I'm sure somebody's done that. But uh, 
But yeah, he's doing those at $65. Once again, showing that he's trying to help Americans. Companies are not taking Trump buildings as assets to give loans for. Why would they? Trump lied to the banks. And the last thing that they will do is loan Trump the $465 million bond. Folks, let me tell you something. Every day, every day, Donald Trump is losing more and more and more. And it's going to start coming more in terms of losing items. I still saw that uh, yesterday where it said that the uh, Scotland government has confiscated the golf course and saying that he still owes them something like 200 million pounds. That's a lot of money, folks. A pound is more than a dollar. So that's probably around $300 million. And with Donald Trump owing all kinds of others, I just don't know where he's going to get this from. But once again, once again, everybody, you need to understand that. You know, Donald Trump and these buildings, Donald Trump has lied to every single bank he's ever worked with. And I'm going to tell you once again, you everybody needs to keep up, keep their eyes open because Donald Trump did come up with the first one for the 91 million for the E. Jean Carroll, which I think that should be coming to a head pretty soon. And then the, going ahead and giving it all to E. Jean Carroll because you can appeal all you want, but what did he appeal? He appealed that he didn't uh, defame her. Well, he's on camera saying, oh, who she is, she's a liar. So when he did rape her, uh, and and they just chose to use sexual assault. But the judge did say that that did not mean that he did not rape her. So let that sink in. So at the end of the day, keep your eyes open. Because if Qatar, if the United Arab, Arab Emirates, if uh, Saudi Arabia decides to throw Donald Trump this kind of money, I think nobody's doing it because they know they're not going to get it back. They know that Donald Trump is going to lose miserably and I think that's why a lot of people are just standing back. And at the end of the day, that's good because every day that he doesn't have that money is another day closer. On By Monday, by Monday, by Monday, they're going to start taking things from him. And I can't wait. It's going to be great. It's going to be an awesome thing to see. I, I saw a photograph of, of the Trump aircraft with a, with a boot on it. Yeah, it was a joke. But... Uh, uh, there's there's truth to that too. So retirement shouldn't be a luxury only for the rich. The fastest growing group in the workforce, quadrupling since the 1960s, are the elderly. How many people lost their retirements from companies out there that were allowed to file for bankruptcy? Let me tell you all something. You know, I, I'm not throwing my hat in the ring to run for anything, but if I ever do, these are some of the things that I'm going to do. I'm going to try to establish a nationalized teacher pay scale that also covers school service personnel. But I also want to also say that every single uh, teacher and school service personnel, firefighter, police officer, uh nurse, people in that level. There's a group of people in a certain level where they do all the damn work and they pay all the damn taxes. I want to give every single one of them every year annually, they always get it every year while they are working, a $5,000 tax break. So if they owe $6,000, they only owe $1,000. If they only owe $3,000, then they're going to get a tax refund for $1,500. Those are two of the things. And I've got a lot more stuff that I've been thinking about. But I'm going to tell you, it's not right. You know, when I go to places and I see a person behind the counter working fast food that's in her 60s, I think to myself, what happened? You know, did she have maybe a husband that died or, 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 or did she work someplace and it just wasn't enough to be able to make it from month to month? Because I understand that anybody in this country that works 40 hours should make enough money to not have to freaking draw welfare. That's, that's another issue. But the fastest growing group getting back into the workforce are the elderly. Now, make no mistake about it. If the Republicans have their way, that'll also be the kids because they don't give two shits about that kid going to school. 
if that kid will go over here and work for this corporation and help those, those assholes make a bunch of money. They will not care about them, and that's an absolute fact. But I'm going to tell you, folks, it is not right. You know, police officers, firefighters, especially firefighters in the cities, should get automatic retirement like the military. You know, as soon as we do our time in the military, we retire, we start drawing our retirement. All you got to do is 20 years or more, and you start drawing your retirement. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's pretty freaking sweet. Now, of course, you know, everybody knows most people that retire have a disability rating that also comes with a, monest, a monetary stipend. And that's also pretty damn nice for Uncle Sam. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Thank you for the three knee operations and the two shoulder surgeries and all the discs in my back slipped and uh, uh, the foot surgery, the trench foot on my feet, uh, the uh, lower back, mid back, upper back neck uh, issues, the... Uh, uh, the traumatic brain injury from the explosions in Iraq and Afghanistan. So, yeah, 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 we deserve that too. And to be honest with you, it is pretty nice. Uh, but there's a lot of people out there that are struggling, and the elderly are the ones that are having to return to the workforce. And we've got people talking about cutting Social Security and Medicare. So let us sink in. And some of those people that are going back to work are voting Republican because they think Donald Trump gives a shit about them. And they're going to be the first one screwed. It's just like you Latino jackaloons. You Latino people out there talking about we're Latinos for Trump. And then Donald Trump gives a speech and says he's going to round Latinos up. Huh? You're not listening to the quiet shit that Donald Trump says out loud. He's going to send you packing too. And there's not a damn thing you'll be able to do about it because you will have already given him the power to do so. And if he doesn't give a shit that you voted for him because the truth is he'll send you down to the friggin' he'll send you to Mexico even if you're from Cuba and he don't give a shit because guess what? He will never have to worry about you voting again. Because Donald Trump will do away with the elections in this country if he in fact, wins. So be careful what you want. Be careful what you wish for, Latinos. I think the Hispanics already know he's shit. He's garbage. But you Latinos better wake up because he doesn't like you. He's not for you. MAGA, make attorneys get attorneys. I love this. Because let me tell you something. Uh... There is no one that I hate more. Nah, there's a lot of people that I hate. But Elena Haba, uh, you know, her smug attitude to sit and act like she's a, a, a solid lawyer. I mean, let me tell you something. She's the reason why the New York fraud trial was a bitch trial. There was nothing. There was nobody presenting it. Judge Ingeron got to look at the evidence and go, damn, Donald Trump is guilty because she failed to check the box for freaking jury trial. And she has the gall to walk out there and act like she's something. And now Donald Trump is shitting all over her and she still don't see it. She is accused of tricking a sexually harassed waitress at Bedminster into accepting $15,000 cash for a, a hush money payment because she was sexually assaulted. Who was she sexually assaulted by? Because if we're talking about her getting involved, it's probably Donald Trump. Probably Donald Trump. She could be sued now for fraud after Trump's golf club settled and left Haba out to dry. So she's trash. There's nothing about Elena Haba that is competency. She is an absolute moron and a loser. And anybody out there seeking her services, there's some dumb sons of bitches. That's a fact. All right, folks, let's check out what kind of memes of the day that John's got for us. Hunter's laptop! Hunter's laptop! Inhalers. That's what I was talking about. Inhalers. I love this. 
I'm automatically attracted to assets. I just start seizing them. It's like a magnet. Just seize. I don't even wait. When you're a state attorney general, they let you do it. You can do anything. You can grab them by the airplane. You can do anything. Folks, let me tell you something. This woman right here is not taking Donald Trump's shit. Donald Trump is going to hate this woman to the day he dies. And when he burns in hell, he's going to dag on see her face every day throughout eternity. Throughout eternity. That's an absolute fact. This is a guy. This is a man who was living large, had his own television show, and he was grifting people all over the place and getting away with it. And he would, he would be able to do that for the rest of his life. Because apparently the rich people don't get looked into. But ever since that rich bastard decided to run down that daggone escalator and then did the things that he did, and now he's been caught, and now not only has he been caught, but now we know that billionaires out there are trying to bite Supreme Court justices. We got billionaires out there that aren't paying their fair share, and now we got a president that's starting to make them pay their fair share. And make no mistake about it, there's a lot we can do with that. There's a lot we can do when we make millionaires and billionaires pay their fair share. We can absolutely balance our budget with their money if we stop giving it to them and start making them pay what they what they should pay, what they deserve to pay. All right, let's see another one. If you love someone with one of these pre-existing conditions, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, depression, asthma, pregnancy, arthritis, Remember, as you vote in November, that if Trump re Republicans win, they'll repeal the Affordable Care Act and your loved ones will lose their insurance. Well, let me tell you a little something about that. OK, I'm not going to I'm not going to act all scared about that. And here's why. Because the thing about it is, is before you can replace the Affordable Care Act, you've got to replace it with something. And Donald Trump and his dumb asses had four years to try and find something and they got nothing nothing. So if you think they could come back in power and actually do something, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. And let me tell you something. The last thing they want to do is play these games. Because if there's ever a January 6th style, except it's against them, I'm going to tell you, folks, it's going to be ugly. All right, let's see one more. The next time you hear Republican politicians talking about getting tough on crime, remember that red states have the highest rates of murder, violent crime, property crime, and overdose deaths. That's a fact. Red states are the worst states in this country. And, and look, you know, maybe there was a time when it wasn't so bad. But right now, a lot of these red states, once again, if it wasn't for New York, if it wasn't for California and, and, and Washington State and, and Maine and, and Connecticut and states like that, your red states would go under. You guys would lose everything. You need to know that. You should be thanking. And for all of you assholes talking about dang on another civil war, what would you do if there was another civil war? First and foremost, the civil the, the understand that the army that you would immediately start fighting would be our United States Army. Don't think for a second that they're going to go your way. And make no mistake about it, you are going to lose and you will lose fast. And it won't even be a race, folks. I'm telling you right now, you guys don't even have a clue what you're fucking with when you want to play games with our military. You have no clue what you are messing with because I can tell you right now, they will erase you and it will be done rapidly and you won't even know it. That's a fact. All right, let's do one more, John. Kushner calls for removal of Palestinians from Gaza to build beachfront condos. Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, said that Israel should move the people out of Gaza and clean it up so that they can build beachfront condos on the very valuable potential of Gaza's waterfront water property. So let that sink in. Let that sink in right there about, you know, what Jared Kushner's thinking about. He's not thinking about the innocent children and the women and kids that are being killed, that are being bombed, that are starving, that are drinking fucking sewer water because they can't find clean drinking water. He doesn't give a shit about that. He doesn't care. All he's thinking about is, hey, there's money someplace in this. These are the worst people in the world. There is nothing about these people that shows leadership. The only thing that these people do is spew greed in everything that they do. Everything that they think of, it's greed. It's how they can, they can monetize it. These are the worst people on the planet. We need to investigate the shit of Jared Kushner and Ivanka too. How dare you work for the government and make $460 million? 
You know, the, the highest salary in the friggin' nation that's a government salary is the salary of the president of the United States of America. And that salary is $400,000. So how the hell does Ivanka working for the government make $460 million? And Jared Kushner walks away with a $2 billion gift. Let that sink in, folks. We deserve so much better. And you know what? We can have it if you vote for it. So wake up, start learning who the right people are to vote for. Get your head out of your ass. Make sure that your neighbors got rides to the polls. If they're, Repu or if they're Republicans, leave them home. Uh, but make sure all the Democrats you know get out to vote. Uh, other than that, folks, y'all be good to each other. I'll see you tomorrow. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way. Hot 10, hot. Eyes right.